next hour, from Gatorade to the Thigh Master, every fitness trend got to start with a little ingenuity. Yeah, and Holly is live in Alexandria at the National Inventors Hall of Fame and Museum. I had no idea it was there. She's going to take us behind the scenes of a new exhibit that gives the inside story on exercise innovations. Back after this. Good morning, everybody. I'm Holly Morse. I hope you had a great weekend. On this Monday, do you consider yourself an idea person? Are you one of those people that thinks you could come up with an invention that could change our daily life? Well, then you will love where we are this morning as we are live in Alexandria at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, which also just happens to be home to the National Inventors Hall of Fame. A museum I bet you didn't even know existed. It is free and open to the public. And we happen to be here this morning because they have a new exhibit that is called uh, Exercising Ingenuity. And what this has to do with is all the different inventions and patents over the years that have to do with health and exercise, being fit. You know, those people that came up with Gatorade, the guy that came up with P90X, you name it, they are featured here. And this morning, we're going to go through this exhibit, see how the exercise and fitness industry has changed over the years, and maybe even find out where it's headed. And while we're here, we're also going to find out the whole process. If you do have one of those creative ideas that you think can make a difference, what do you do about it? How do you get a patent? Well, this is where you find out. We've got all the information this morning. Sarah? Right, Holly. Thank you. A way to get some inspiration, that's for sure. 722 right now on this Monday morning. Still ahead this morning, it appears the economy is really taking a toll on younger Americans. We'll explain. And our Holly Morris is getting physical this morning. She is checking out a new exhibit at the National Inventors Hall of Fame Museum in Alexandria. Yes, there is one. A little later, a look at the historic advances and future trends relating to a healthier mind and body. Well, the history and the future of health, fitness, and nutrition is the focus of a new exhibit at a local museum. And Holly's there checking it out. She is in Alexandria. Hi, Holly. <laughs> Hey, good morning, and I am at a museum I bet you didn't even know existed. We are at the National Inventors Hall of Fame. It's free and open to the public, and now is the time to come because there is a whole new exhibit that has everything to do with exercising. Like you said, it's called Exercising Ingenuity. Exactly what it is and what we can all learn from it live next on Fox 5 Morning News. Stay with us. Steve, I didn't know they modeled the sky after you. <laughs> come on, dude. Somehow, Holly is still able to always go find a fun new place to visit. Every day that we are working, Monday through Friday. Today is no different. This morning, she's in Alexandria at the National Inventors Hall of Fame Museum, where they recently opened up a new exhibit. And Holly, before you even ask, no, I have not heard of this uh, <laughs> museum. I really haven't. <laughs> well, you know what? It's funny because they've recently opened this exhibit, but do you know when they opened the museum? 1973. It's <laughs> It's been around for 38 years. What have we been doing, right? Well, if ever there was a time for you to come visit this jewel, uh, now is the time because they have a really interesting exhibit going on. It's called Exercising Ingenuity. And Thad Parsons is the Visitor and Museum Services Coordinator, and he joins me. Good morning to you. Good morning. And this is a good little kept secret, the museum here. Yes, we are. Most of our visitors are people coming to the patent office for business, uh, lawyers, or inventors and uh, innovators. Yeah, so then the, and they're like, what's that over there? Oh, wait, let me stop in there. Okay, well, be careful what you wish for because now there might be a rush of people coming to see this exhibit, which you would be happy about. Exactly. Because you've spent a lot of time on it. So tell me a little bit about exercise and ingenuity. Well, it's about health and fitness, innovations, patents, and trademarks. And what we're focusing on are some of our National Inventors Hall of Fame inductees and their inventions that have made a significant impact on modern life. Everything from medicines to sports drinks to fitness equipment. Um, yeah, everybody's interested in this, right? Because, I mean, in, in terms of our health and wellness, and so this is kind of a natural fit and maybe a good way to get people to come explore the new museum. It's always fun to see from whence we came. So let's start back with some of the old inventions that are being honored here in the exhibit. Well, our two oldest ones are um, Lydia Pinkham's medicine, but also John H. Kellogg. 
Um, John H. Kellogg is William Kellogg's brother. Mm -hmm. William Kellogg, you may know from the cereal box, is the signature at the top. <laughs> from the healthy Frosted Flakes? Oh, <laughs> uh, well. Doesn't that seem funny? Anyway, okay. But um, his brother was all into scientific living mm -hmm. and um, healthy living. So over here we have a couple of his inventions. Um, we have a vibrating chair. Which, and now what exactly is that supposed to do? Um, it helped with intestinal problems, with um, sore feet, okay. aching muscles, a little bit of everything. Sort of a go-to cure for him. Hop on there, Thad. I want to see how it works. I know you're dying to show it. Now, you can't do this if you come to visit the exhibit, No, most right? people don't see? get the opportunity <laughs> to hop on the vibrating chair. Right. But if you were at the sanitarium at Battle Creek, you would get the chance to maybe spend 15, 20 minutes on it to solve most of your problems. Now, at what point did they realize that maybe that wasn't doing anything? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it was a popular um, solution to things like sore feet and... Um, <laughs> Even if you happen to have some intestinal problems. I gotcha. Um, okay, I want to make sure we get this in because this looks like the precursor to the tanning booth, but I know that's not what that is. Well, it's a radiant heat bath, and it's designed to raise the body's temperature slightly to help expel toxins. Really? Um, and these were very popular. There's one of this exact same model um, at, uh, at Ford's house in uh, Florida. And he was a proponent of using light baths. Um, they also appeared on the Titanic really? and at Buckingham Palace. Wow. So these were really believed to well, change yeah. your I life. Mean, <laughs> if you're in the middle of the winter somewhere, a little uh -huh. extra heat and light is very useful. Well, you know, that actually makes a good point because, you know, the people that have, the, like, the light disorder, you know, I mean, they do give them those lamps nowadays to, to help them, yeah. you know, get their vitamin D and be healthier. So maybe that's not so crazy well, after all. Many of the things Kellogg talked about, such as healthy eating, um, abstinence from alcohol and tobacco, um, the use of uh, exercise and fresh air, are still popular, helpful hints today. Some of his others, a little less questionable. Well, see, all good ideas have to start somewhere, and then, right, we build upon that. And now, so what, around what year was this? Um, this is all late 19th, early 20th century. Okay, all right. So here's what you need to know. MyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to the uh, National Inventors Hall of Fame website. They are open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and Saturdays noon until 5. It is absolutely free for you to come in and see. Of course, we're going to continue to go through our journey here through the years to see how health, fitness, and nutrition, and uh, inventions with respect to those areas have evolved over the years. And we're also, since we're here, going to find out if you happen to be at home thinking, you know what, I have an invention that I think just might change the world. What do I do about it? Maybe you need to make a trip here. We'll find out about that as well. Don't go anywhere with that. I won't. All right. Very good. Back to you in the studio. Holly, thank you very much. 7.56 right now. Holly, getting a lesson in fitness history. It's part of a new exhibit that you don't want to miss and she found it for us keep it right here we'll be right back yes, and holly is using a little ingenuity this morning holly Good morning to you. Guess what this is? This is an electric horse. It was actually in the White House in 1925 because this is how President Calvin Coolidge got his exercise in an efficient way. Now, where do you find something like this? You find it at the National Inventors Hall of Fame where we are live this morning in Alexandria. It is in the office of the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office building. Coming up, we're going to tell you all about this new exhibit called Exercising Ingenuity. Why you're going to want to come see it and why this is the building you also need to know if you think you have an invention that will change the world. It's all live next on Fox 5 Morning News. Stay with us. The National Inventors Hall of Fame Museum has opened an exhibit that features inventions, patents, and trademarks that are tied to fitness. Holly is there today to learn more about the Exercising Ingenuity exhibit. Holly, really, really fun stuff. I love that mechanical horse contraption. I know. Who knew that was in the White House, right? Hey, do you remember taking the presidential fitness test when you were younger? Hopeful. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I remember uh, taking it, and uh, I think a lot of kids do, and something like that is something that is also being honored and featured here in this Exercising Ingenuity, because this is a new exhibit that has to do with all 
the inventions and different things over the years that have addressed health and fitness. Thad Parsons is the visitor and museum visitors and museum services coordinator, and he joins me. And you know, and as I go through here and, and look at everything, Thad, what I really uh, understand is that we've always always been obsessed with our health and how to make it better. Yes, um, especially at uh, turn of the last century, so turn of the 19th to the early 20th century, health and fitness was a big thing, and people for the first time started being able to weigh themselves and test their own strength in public. Okay, whose fault is it that we, did, we could start weighing ourselves? <laughs> I don't want that person in the Hall of Fame. No, but this is kind of a fun thing that you have here. Yeah, this is a little um, Watling Tom Thumb uh, penny scale. Mm -hmm. um, all of our penny scales, we have four from a private collector on loan in the exhibit, and they all work and they all take a penny so um, any visitor is invited to come on down and hop up yeah um, the pregnant lady's not hopping on the scale by the way but you can I'm fine with that <laughs> um, and this was really uh, not only was this a way for people to, to get their weight but um, it was very profitable yeah um, these were quite inexpensive during the early 20th century and the a young entrepreneur could buy a handful of these and find a good high traffic location mm -hmm. like a drugstore or a grocery store and um, make quite a bit of money by putting pennies in the machine. This one, um, besides um, giving your weight, which is um, a little bit heavier today than normal. Oh, um, <laughs> see what happens? TV ads, don't yeah. worry. <laughs> um, this one also will give you your fortune. It has a roll of fortunes in it. Um, I asked it what color becomes me and it says flesh color. Hmm, how smart it is. Yeah. And just to give people an idea of, of how much people use these, yeah. what's the um, amount? In 1937, according to the U.S. Commerce Department, 100 billion pennies or more went through these, which is about uh, $100 million. $100 million. People made $100 million off of this. Yes. That's why it's in the Inventors Hall of Fame, right? Dad, thank you so You're much. Welcome. I'm going to continue to walk on around here because standing over here is Elizabeth Doherty, and she is the Acting Deputy Director for the Office of Patent Legal Administration. And I know that a lot of people are looking here and going, I could have come up with that. Oh, we hear that time and time again. The museum is a great way for the public to learn a little bit more about innovation and invention. Just last year alone, over 500,000 patent applications were filed with the U.S. Patent and Trademark really? Office. Really? That's a lot of creativity, a lot of ingenuity. And you guys encourage that. Obviously, I mean, obviously, we I know do. it costs. I mean, getting a patent is not free. Um, but um, inventors are what make the future. Very much so. We, in fact, uh, have heard it said that two out of three jobs that are being produced in the American economy today are, in fact, due to new innovations and new entrepreneurs starting up a business or growing a business, primarily due to their intellectual property. So what is your advice for someone at home right now that's watching that says, I have something that I think, you know, really needs to be patented? Our advice is to pursue your dream and to pursue your dream through using the United States Patent and Trademark System. We have a number of resources available. I, I direct people to start with our website, www.uspto.gov. We also have an inventor's assistance phone line that they can ask questions, ask direct questions to the experts, 1-800-PTO-9199. They can even email us if they've got a direct question about how do I get started, where, where, how do I take a first step, and that can be directed to independentinventor at uspto.gov. And how many patents actually become profitable? Well, that's, that's a real question as well. <laughs> um, they say about 7% of patents are licensed and about 6% actually see some type of uh, financial return. Very good. BuyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and you can get all those different numbers and websites and everything that Elizabeth talked about. Coming up in our next hour, though, we're going to continue to exercise our ingenuity. We're going to take a look at uh, some more recent fitness developments that you might recognize and see why they are being honored in this special exhibit. Back to you all in the studio. Thanks, Holly. All right. All right, plus Holly is learning about, among other things, the history of fitness now. Holly. I am. Tony, have you ever heard of the V-Bar and a lady by the name of Anne-Marie Benstrom? I have not. I 
bet you've heard of Suzanne Summers and the Thigh Master. Oh, yes, I well, have. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let me tell you. It was actually Anne Marie who came up with the patent for the V bar, but it didn't become popular until it was sold by Suzanne Summers under the name of the Thigh Master. And those are some of the fun stories that we're learning this morning as we are live at the National Inventors Hall of Fame in Alexandria. It's a new exhibit called Exercising Ingenuity. Why, you might just want to come check it out yourself live later. Thanks, Holly. First, here is a look at today's. The National Inventors Hall of Fame Museum is featuring a new exhibit. It's all about fitness, nutrition, and exercise. Holly is up next to explain. And the change of seasons. Holly Morris is at the National Inventors Hall of Fame Museum in Alexandria, Virginia this morning. Who knew there was such a thing? She is there to learn more about a recently opened exhibit that features inventions in the health and fitness fields. Holly. This is a really fun exhibit. It's called Exercising Ingenuity. Just opened last month. It's going to be here for about a year, so you have time to come visit it. Uh, but you get to come see and learn the stories behind like Gatorade. I'm sure you know about Gatorade. This was created because an assistant coach at the University of uh, Florida went to one of the professors of renal medicine and said, hey, you know what, my players are being affected by the heat. Can you find out what's going on? So he came up with this drink that helped restore carbohydrates and electrolytes. That was 1965. Now Gatorade accounts for 80% of the sports beverage market, and it has worldwide sales of more than $4 billion a year. Yes dreams are realized here at the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Specifically, we are at the uh, National Hall of Fame, uh, in National Inventors Hall of Fame, I should say, museum where they are showcasing this special exhibit. And Thad Parsons continues to join me this morning. He is the Visitor and Museum Services Coordinator. And this is, you know what, I think this is kind of the fun part of the exhibit because this is, these are inventions that a lot of people know and use today. Yeah, these are things that people have either been developed in their lifetime or that they may be used to have around like old VHS exercise videos. <laughs> Sweating to the oldies and I think I might even have had a jazzercise outfit like that lady's wearing uh, over there. But what are some of the things that people are going to kind of see as they go through this part of the exhibit? Well, um, starting with some of the things that people maybe have seen at the fairgrounds, we have a handful of vintage strength testers that visitors can come use. Mm -hmm. um, they can come through and see some videos featuring everyone from some of the classic exercise um, heroes to the the modern extreme sports um, and then over here towards the end we feature sort of the the newest sort of most innovative parts of the exhibit I mean um, this is really I mean P90X people buy this as a gift for people now yes exactly and then These they are... quickly abandon it no I'm just kidding <laughs> uh, but then there's the insanity they talk about Gore-Tex the whole rock climbing phase and, and what this really says is not only has there been a lot of inventions but there are still inventions out there yes someone has to invent everything from rock climbing safety equipment to um, trademarked uh, exercise workouts and things to new weight machines. Um, here in the exhibit, if people want to come have a little workout, uh -huh. um, they can test a brand new Nautilus One strength machine. Oh, so this is like the latest greatest. This is the latest greatest. Um, unlike, is this what you use to work out, Thad? Uh, I, I do occasionally <laughs> do a few reps here in the museum. Let me see. I want to see you do a few reps. <laughs> but So this is fairly recent. Yes. This is um, the newest clam shell abdominal exerciser. Um, unlike the old-fashioned ones where you used to have the pen, where you oh, had yeah. to figure out how many, this one simply has a little um, <gasps> dial. You you flip the dial, then you um, can flip it to add the extra five pounds. I love that because you know what? I used to not like to use them because I didn't want to have to do the whole yeah, exactly. changing thing. Yeah, exactly. There's all the changing and you may not, this is easy because you don't get confused about right. which hole to go in or you don't miss the pen and they all fall off or anything. Is this a good place to come and be inspired like you said you could see one idea and say oh you know what I know something that would make that even better exactly that's one reason why we're here whether it's a new bicycle um, invention or a new exercise machine we're here everyone starts with a simple idea 
um, gets it patented or trademarked, depending on what type of intellectual property it is, and then goes from there. And so we never know who the next Jack LaLanne is going to be. Well, Thomas Edison was the first inductee, right? Yes. 1973 in the National Inventors Hall of Fame. I see over there the list of 2011. Do you know what did any of those people do? Um, well, in 2011, we had everyone from um, Mary Anderson, who's the lady that invented one of the first windshield wipers. Oh. So, uh, an invention everyone used today. To um, Steve Sasson and. Um Forgot the uh, Steve Sasson and Eric Fossum, who are two of the people that invented the modern digital camera. Very so, cool. In our last year, we have everything from steam last year, steam cars, uh, internet security, uh, medical patents from uh, back surgery to um, pacemakers. And Limitless. Exactly. Fab, thank you so much. MyFoxDC.com is our website. We have a link to theirs. The museum is open Monday through Friday, nine to five. It's free. It's open on Sun on Saturdays rather, from noon until five. They are closed on Sunday. And and federal holidays. Back to you in the studio. All right, Holly, thank you so much. Well